We got it. The key to the gate of truth. Apiron has answered me. This is the final solution. We must leave here at once. We have to tell everyone. I am so proud of you, 37. We will save everyone. But there's one thing I don't understand. And that is? Six. His scroll saved your life. Maybe he foresaw the dangers and protected you from it, so you can leave there almost unharmed. But what was he trying to tell you? When he warned you about the collapse of your world as you know it? Mind your step, everyone. We are passing the Wall of Truth. The wall will come crashing down if false words are spoken. Silence is advised here, unless circumstances dictate otherwise. Eight hundred and eighty-eight. Forgive me, but this seems to be the right moment for some long neglected questions to be answered. Perhaps, but hardly appropriate or righteous. We will talk of righteousness after you've shared what you know, Six. You've been silent for too long. Four years have passed since you became Six, and for four years you have been hiding things from us. The long neglected questions have created a cloud of doubt between us. And now the boulder of fate is falling on us, and we are teetering on the brink of destruction. It's time to be honest and true to your people, while you still have them. We are the seekers of truth. It is unjust to keep us from it. Let the wall of truth bear witness. I want nothing but an answer from you. I am not here to provoke untimely conflicts. Answer her, Six. You should be glad that I am not the interrogator here, because the wall would have collapsed immediately. You may lie, but the wall will fall. You may stay silent, then I will lie to break the silence and the wall. Or maybe you could outwit the wall with the liar's paradox. Only sadly, I have tested it for you. One cannot deceive it by stating, I'm lying. After all, it's a test of morality, not logic. It needs your honesty, not your wit or anything else.
What do you wish to know? What else? The most important question, of course. The question about the essence. Why has our research stagnated for the past four years? Why did we fail to predict the emanation in 1929 and again in this time? Have we misunderstood the premise? What if the emanation is not a manifestation of the transcendental law at all? Worshippers worship, thinkers think. Governors govern, and researchers research. Your questions are not mine to answer, 210. A six has no expertise on the study of the emanation. I'm not qualified to answer about its essence. Your question is too abstract, 210. Don't dance around the subject, Six. The wisdom has been passed on to you, as it has to every other Six. You have inherited not only knowledge and insight, but also the memories of your predecessors. You must know the answer, for it is part of your inheritance. Tell us this. The last leader of the study of the emanation, 77. What question did she bring to appear on? And what answer did she receive? I watched her walk into the cave and come out unharmed. I watched her, and the previous six, board the ship in search of answers in the phenomenal world. The ship didn't come back in time. The emanation caught them. And that was only the beginning of our misfortunes. The model failed. Our whereabouts were revealed. Hysteria now poisons the minds of our people. And the empirical knowledge accumulated over the years suddenly no longer applies to the current situation. Why? What did she find out? Could it be that something's happened to the transcendental law above? Has the truth we believed in changed? Hipparsus discovered the secrets of Root 2 and toppled Pythagoras' school of thought. The controversy surrounding Newton and infinitesimals presented a challenge to the groundwork of calculus. Russell's self-referential paradox sparked the third mathematical crisis. Though said theory was eventually perfected, the lessons on self-referentiality remained. In the end, Gödel's incompleteness theorems showed that proving or disproving everything is impossible. Therefore, absolute knowledge is unattainable. The boulder of fate will tumble down its peak, whether 37 is the one pushing it or not. However hard Oedipus tried to defy destiny, his path to tragedy remained unchanged. You're talking in riddles again. I should thank you for bringing the question here, 888, so I may finally speak the truth. 
77 did ask about the essence of the emanation. She asked, what happened to the supreme existence? What plunged the world into madness? The answer was, disorder and chaos. You knew this all along, from the first day of your revelation, when you became six. You knew that the emanation was not a manifestation of the transcendental law and patterns above, but rather a symptom of its utter disorder and chaos. And you knew that the transcendental realm of numbers was no more, and that the essence of Numa, the one true form we believed in, had become an ever-changing existence like the irrational numbers? Four years. You kept this to yourself for four years. Why? Was it for a false sense of peace? To keep the island stable, did you deceive us to prevent the realization that our research would be in vain? It's time to halt the bickering. Get everyone out of here now! Pray to the gods for what you are about to do, and pray that all goes well. Once familiar with this practice, you will understand the constitution of both eternal gods and mortal men. Huh? What happened? Did they not carry out the cleansing ceremony? You will know the extent of all things, the boundaries of their entirety, and what connects them together. Whoa! What's going on? An earthquake? No! This is... The large-scale ritual on this island... is... undoing itself? You will see, as you should, that the nature of the universe flows in all things alike. Why? Why is our circle gone? Thus, you will not hope for what is beyond your reach, and you will not be deceived. Pray, my friends. Pray for yourselves, and pray for everyone. Pray for all the suffering and misery around you. Reach into the unseeable darkness and pray to the unknowable supreme. Speak your hopes, for you are a finite creature yearning to transcend its own existence. 
the determination that once helped us overcome our insignificance and touch the light of Numa should guide us once more. Where are you going? To the cave. The trial is not over. The final cleansing is yet to come. There are still duties to fulfill. is going to start. Feast? Yes! Today's the big day! We're celebrating because we kicked Manus Vindicte off the island, found the key to storm immunity, and saved the numbers people from great disaster. Vertin, you'll miss out on the delicious honey roasted rabbit. Wait, Regulus, you just kicked over something. What? What is it? Something for the cattle? <sighs> Whoever left this here nearly tripped this great captain. Forget it. Come, Vertin! Oh, what are you still doing there? Nice wine. Did you make it yourself? <gasps> Careful, Miss Lilia. Too much wine can corrupt one's body and will. Besides, you are already halfway through our stock for the year. Hmm? But this drink you brought is pleasant to the note. Coffee, you said. I have heard many things about it. Oh. Oh. Bitter. <laughs> Poor guy. I was expecting more from a man of your size. For God's sake, Regulus, keep an eye on your first mate here. Wow, he's so out of it right now. <clears throat> it appears that this apple's abstinence from the bottle will have to begin anew. Vertin, finally! I was looking for you! Hello everyone! We have a big announcement to make! Sophia's just completed her proof and found her number! Don't worry 
about the swallows? They're going to fetch six for us. He's napping in the hall of apparel. An excuse to not join the party. Not so fast with the announcement, 37. People will find out sooner or later. Thank you for helping us, Virgin. We wouldn't have made it without you. And I look forward to our continued collaboration with the Foundation. No. None of this makes any sense. Oh, enough business. People are having a party here. Well, what do you say to this lovely captain who just picked up some food for you? <sighs> My apologies, Regulus. I was too focused on linear regression formulas. Ah, that's all right. Was a bee getting stuck in the kitchen roasted rabbits all day anyway? Unlimited supply of honeyed rabbits all day today! I heard Sophia is making her announcement today. I'm curious which number she will be. Care to wager on that? I'd say she's a multiple of three. Hmm. Then I'd say... She is a multiple of 139. I have to admit, she has a good number. A number 100 times better than me. 6 and 210 put together. Calculating. 37 plus 6 plus 210 times 100 equals 2. Oh no. She is not 25,300. I doubt anyone could live with themselves with a number that long. You haven't met before. This is Amu, my white rooster. Amu, this is Burton. Rooster. Something's not right. None of this is right. Something's happened on the island. I must still be in the cave. <laughs> I have to get out of here. Look at my back. Critters eating beans, and a white rooster. These are supposed to be taboos on the island. Is this an illusion brought on by the fog? Or a new trial? No, something's not right. The flow of arcane skills on the island has changed. I need to get rid of them first. My surroundings changed. Is all this still an illusion? Looks like the way we came, but it's a little different. These signs, are they trying to take me somewhere? The way out, perhaps?
get him? Where are you going? I made some coffee for those clever eggheads. Enough to mend their broken souls after turning their backs on it for half their lives. Fancy a cuppa as well? Here you go. Regulus, it's a violation of their scripture. You mustn't consume any beans or bean-based products. Yeah, yeah, the great sacred scripture again. Hey, think you can just walk away from a pirate without breaking any rules? Let's see you try. Ha! Now you must have the beans. Or, or you can pick them all up. According to their rules, I'm not to eat things off the ground, or pick them up for that matter. Though, this mountain of beans isn't going away by itself. Fortunately, it doesn't appear to be too stable. Fortunately, it doesn't appear to be too stable. An illusion of a coffee bean mountain like this is almost as cliché as a pirate with a hook for a ham. <laughs> Something like this could never hold up to skepticism. Mankind is slow in learning new ideas. They need new information to be explained in simple terms, using examples and analogies, or reduced to its most basic symbols and generalizations. Eventually, once they've gotten used to the formulas and outlines, they may just see below the surface and find the deeper essence waiting there. What about you? What do you think is your essence? Are you any more significant than a pile of coffee beans? Ah! The mind, the soul, but do they really exist? A thirsty animal thinks of water and seeks out a clear spring. Hunger pangs tell the cheetah to seek its prey. The fear of isolation tells the flamingo to seek the safety of her flock. Every action we have ever taken was prompted by a natural impulse. Sparks of electric current that can be tracked, observed, predicted. Perhaps our thoughts, desires, and our minds are only the sum of these minute reactions of cause and effect. Perhaps none of us truly exist, darling. I came in from the left. Why would I leave the same way I came in? Oh no! You've made a mistake. Now you must stay behind bars until you prove the four color theorem. Be careful not to make another mistake, or you'll be thrown into the gorging current and confined there forever. You look worried. Don't be. We're friends. I will defend you in court. I will try my best to reduce your sentence to trisecting angles with an unmarked straight edge and a compass. I have to leave, but not from the right. There must be a way to reverse left and right. So then left or right can be reversed as easily as changing your frame of reference. How can we hold people responsible for their actions when we use such malleable definitions? We lead our lives according to these strict rules. Rules that are always changing definitions. <sighs> it's too much for this old brain of mine. Why not simplify our definitions? To learn about the world like we were kids once more. Let's begin with math. 
Could it be as mutable as left and right? Could there be a hidden integer between three and four? Is one always one? Or is it just our frame of reference? But where is it then, this everlasting truth? Have you ever seen it? Have you basked in its radiance before? Maybe the shadows on the cave wall are our true reality. Maybe the sun is just another prop in our shadow theater. What if the people who chose to stay in the cave were the ones who were truly wise? Be careful what you hold to be true, darling. Timekeeper, are you leaving the banquet? Perhaps we might go somewhere quiet. I wanted to speak with you about linear regression. Terribly sorry, Sonato. I really must be leaving. Wait! Perhaps a more impromptu debate? I have some fresh ideas about our past discussions. Could I trouble you to help me refine them? The storm is gone. We have time to enjoy life again. You don't have to keep checking your watch or your task list anymore. The time still is against us, and I haven't any left to spare. Not even to explain myself to Sonato. I hate to be rude, but I need a moment of peace. If only I could turn everything silent. stick to your plan, then you must value your time wisely. Don't get caught up in idle conversation. Be firm in your determination, but careful not to go too far. Otherwise, your silence may be taken as a slight. And should they retaliate, what then? That's no peace, but a silent war. And peace will not return until one side concedes even if they are blameless. Doesn't that seem unfair? There's no other way. <laughs> How decisive young people can be. You don't stop to ask who ought to take the blame, or if it is right that the innocent concede to the guilty. You only want peace, and damned be the costs. We can only hope that your snap judgments will always choose the right side, darling. Oh, you're still here, Virgin. I thought you had disappeared completely. I was hoping I might talk to you about my number. So sorry, but I really do have to leave now. Please, I think you may be the only one that can help. It won't take you long. Six. A perfect number. But it isn't my number. Let's try again. Reset the calculation for me. Back to zero. Put an asterisk and zero and we can continue. No, that can't be my number either. It's far too brilliant for me. Please reset the calculation back to zero. Thirty-seven isn't a fan. Still, I would be honored to have an integer like that as my number. 
Let's try it one more time. I have a feeling that together we can find the right number for me. simple as your name. A name, after all, is only worth what meaning we give it. Bewildered by their own existence, man turns to the ultimate truth for answers. But soon enough, they come to see the truth is also beyond their ability to comprehend. That is when the fear catches up with them. So they put aside their search for truth and look for something more straightforward. A simple answer. Enough to satisfy a frightened child. Caught between a comforting lie and something more frightening than the truth. That might be no truth at all. And if that is so, how can we know who we are really? Hoo-hoo! <laughs> You have a quick wit, darling. Keep that wit keen. It's healthy to have a sense of humor in the face of grim reality. But be careful. A sharp wit can cut carelessly. Be mindful of who laughs along with you. Still, it seems you're on the right track. Maybe the real answer to that question can't be found. But if it can, you might start by looking in a mirror. Seven? Is that you? Up the triangle, on the triangle, and the rectangle, on the rectangle. Perfect! As things should be. The emanation? Disorder and chaos. This can't be. This isn't right. How ugly. How inelegant. How could this be the revelation from the patterns of the transcendental law above? How could such a terrible answer fall on my ears? I can't tell the others about this. There must be a mistake. I need proof. I have to go out there. <sighs> Virgin, my child. Are you here to partake in sand play as well? No matter how oft we arrange them, the sight of them never grows stale. Alas. I shall destroy it.
I... I think I had a terrible dream. What did you dream? Regulus claimed Six's throne and declared this the rock and roll empire of irrational numbers. She took out a jar of coffee beans and stuffed one into my mouth. I'm relieved that I woke up in time, and you as well. Let's go, Virgin. We need to tell everyone the numbers. Do you hear that? So many people out there. Must be Sophia here to pick me up. I told her she can wait for me outside. Sophia! Wait, 37. When will they give us the order to attack? What's taking so long? The island is just across the bay. We have men, weapons, supplies, everything. Just give us order and we will take to shore. Check out these bad boys. Anti-Arcanum weapons courtesy of the American from that Walden place. That creep just doesn't sit right with me. He's got that Arcanus stink about him. But his technology is solid and we needed it. We've got to get ahead of the Serbs and the Greeks. Relax, Georgie. Leaves the decisions to the big shots. I'm sure they'll just... Hug out the differences in the meeting room or something. Besides, you saw the monsters on that island. Can't speak for everyone here, but I don't want to die. Screw the negotiations! Screw the committee! Like it or not, we were the first ones to find the island, not the Austrians or the Germans. Those Arcanists have gone into hiding again. I swear I could see it from here yesterday. Hmm? Are those bird-like creatures? Leaving in droves? Brother, leave them be! Come, play with us! George?
What a good opportunity this is. It's too good to pass up. We, we've got to act now. We will claim what is ours. This island belongs to us. It's in our territory and we were the first to find it. Why shouldn't it be ours? The Austro-Hungarian Empire has officially declared war on Serbia. Russia is mobilizing in support of Serbia. Germany demands Russia to stop mobilizing at once. Germany is mobilizing. France is mobilizing. It's odd to see you so flustered. What's the matter? I'm headed to the business school. We'll talk when I get back. Made shot your arm in a duel. Wait, what happened to your arm? Oh, Ethan. Yes, he wounded me. He had to prove his standing to the Brotherhood. There was no other way. But that's in the past. He gave me his arm, so now we're even. I have to go. I have to find Johnson, Raymond, and Herbert. That little rascal pushed Ilsa into the fountain. We have a score to settle. Take care, Clara. No! Albert! Don't go! This storm syndrome is spreading, Doctor! Stay any longer, you'll be infected! with me. Doctor, 
have to get out of here. Look at my back. Thirty-eight is about to return. This way, Doctor. We have to go back to your clinic. The Special Operations Squad will meet us there. Marcus, you once said that there was another way to make things right. And then you did your part, as I did mine. But now, after all that's happened, please tell me, what's the point of us trying? Will we save them in time? Is there any chance that we can turn things around? The ritual you acquired, the one you said could save everyone. Is it working now? Let me in.
I have just one question. Why hasn't the project stopped yet? Adler Hoffman, you have been removed from the team. You're not authorized to be here. You have violated... The LSCC safety management regulations? I brought them with me. You're welcome. If you cared about the regulations as much as you claim, you'd know that none of what's happening aligns with its guidelines. Even the head of Laplace has no authority to continue the experiment under these circumstances. Get out of my face, Adler. I don't have time for this. We're in a state of war. Every participant has signed an informed consent form. If you are not part of this project, please leave immediately. We only have 18 hours until the storm. This is it. The first time we've made such a breakthrough in all nine storms. Your sister gave up her life to take us this far. I hope you don't need me to remind you that. Yes, she made the ultimate sacrifice, hoping that it would lead to a breakthrough. But instead, death continues to rise. How can you let this go on? I demand to know why the experiment is still going! Don't we have enough crazies around here? Madame Lucy has important things to do. She has no time for you. Go cry to your therapist, human. Important? What could be possibly more important than this right now? What happened to the humanitarian ideals of the Foundation? Are we now under the tyranny of machines? What's this important thing she's got to do? Reading the paper? Sipping on oil and charging up in a 230 volt bath? Is that you, Adler? Welcome. I am not in a suitable form to receive a guest. Simone, can you put me back in my body? I feel much better. Thank you. Oh, you have even put on a face for me. How sweet of you. I have noticed your icy gaze, Researcher Adler. You are yearning to correct the logic of this place. Well, I only said that to Simone out of courtesy. In reality, whichever body I am put into makes no difference to me. The experiment, ma'am. Why hasn't it stopped? Are you going to pretend that nothing's happened? That no one died? Could it be that you and Ulrich, the Awakened, being the tin cans you are, have no regard for actual lives? Ah! 
Rattler Hoffman, I will not warn you again. Relax, Adler. You are led by a biased opinion because you lack critical information. A common defect in all cognitive processes. I believe you will shift to a more rational perspective once you receive sufficient information on the subject. A more rational perspective? We are humans, not machines. We are not expendable parts. I have plenty of reasons to question your decisions. Your excessive insistence on this experiment could be a sign of uncontrollable behavior, a trait commonly seen in arcanists. The experiment has been canceled everywhere. Except for this very room. What? As you and Researcher Medicine Pocket have said, the ritual is beyond the limits of almost everyone here. The side effects will kill them before the ritual can even take effect. The first wave was inevitable. Dora had pressed send before she disintegrated. We only managed to halt the subsequent transmissions and evacuate the unaffiliated staff. We kept only a few arcanists on the team, and each has signed the consent form. Forgive me, ma'am, but I have to use your argument against you. You too are guided by a biased opinion. An overly optimistic one. Because you have failed to properly assess the risks involved. We have suffered enough misfortunes just by uttering a few syllables of the incantation. We've talked about the limit of things before. You should know better and ask the rest of the team to quit the experiment. Your insistence will only bring calamity upon calamity on our people for nothing! Hmm. You might be right. But how is being right going to help us? Huh? You spoke of the limit. And I am surprised that it is you who brought it up. The physical appearance of humans has remained relatively unchanged since the Neolithic era, but their thoughts and civilization continued to evolve and underwent significant transformations. The achievements that humanity enjoys today were not given to the species by any one person with godlike powers, but were the result of the collective efforts of all human beings. Limits and boundaries must be pushed, or there would never have been room for development. There is no reason to believe that the limit cannot be challenged, especially when we already have the tools to do so. We must make progress happen. Grandiose lies. Lies? We have no choice but to go beyond that limit. If we do not break away from the storm, there is no future for us, let alone progress. We need to first determine all the side effects as a priority. This important step will help us compile data and eliminate the effects so our colleagues can use the ritual safely. And who will try it this time, Madam Lucy? You're not going to test the side effects as the cost of lives, are you? No. Thanks to Ulrich, we stumbled upon a breakthrough. 
You are right. It is time to send the other Arcanists home. Only the Awakened are needed here. The Awakened? Power is back, Mom. We are ready to resume. Hmm. It will take time to properly explain. Please wait, Adler. We have yet to reach an agreement. What? Are you experimenting? Here? She's read the reports, right? She was there when Dora broke into pieces. Just stand there! Stop her! Now! Who's going to lead us if she also turns into a pile of scabs? Stay where you are, Enigma. You insisted on being here. You demanded to see this. Don't bring your pathetic, narrow-minded humanitarian values in here and tell us what to do. What do you know about us? You can do it, madam. This is just part of the established procedures. Just a few more syllables, madam, and it will be over. Established procedures. I like that. Seer Clo. Was that all, Simone? Yes. Good.
wanted to show me? To watch her utter a curse that's always brought death, only to die in vain? And you just let it happen? Calm down. Calm down. She's dead right there. You murderer. We have already repeated this experiment many times. Many times? What? You've sent people to their deaths over and over again? Look at you, Adler, peeing your pants over a curse. The human boy is so scared that he forgot to ask the crucial question. Did the ritual work? But... what do you mean? The curse... the side effects killed her. The experiment failed. Is that not what happened? No. Triggering the curse and failure are two separate things. I was the first one to recite the incantation, way before Dora. When I read it aloud, it worked. I felt the warmth of a miraculous blessing on my head. Soft, light as a feather. I told Madame Lucy right away, but as soon as she left the room, the curse hit me, and I began to liquefy. There was no one else in the room. My liquid form had become too insubstantial to push the help button. A long darkness followed. After that, I woke up again in my original primitive form, the way I first came into this world. Original primitive form? Unlike humans, the Awakened have neither flesh nor nerves. We are pieces of consciousness, echoes of a primordial melody that just happen to reside in material objects by chance. With a mind and a body combined, we could talk, learn, think like you do, and perform the experiment and endure the side effects. And this curse, for some reason, cannot affect the primal consciousness that caused our awakening in the first place. While human minds dissipate when their tangible bodies are destroyed, our minds reawaken regardless of the changes and destruction of our external bodies. Of course, this was an assumption based on idealized circumstances, and I needed another awakened being who could awaken in different bodies to confirm my theory. That is why I sought out Madame Lucy for cross-verification. The results? Yes, it was an assumption! You said it yourself! You came back to life this time, but what about the next? Nothing is for sure in Arcanum. What if she never wakes up again? What if she dies for good? We know what we are doing, human. Stay out of this. Only the Awakened can carry out the experiment. So we must proceed. This has nothing to do with race. It is a sense of duty that every researcher should have possessed when they chose this path. We have to go beyond the limit. Not out of madness, but out of rationality. Hmm. We seem to have replicated effect number two. And 117 of the Coleman Lab's protective rituals were proven ineffective. Write it down, Simone. This is the fourth time we have seen it. Also, number 45 and 69 are related to it. We need to speed up. This is too slow.
Adler, what are you doing here? I am glad to see you out of your room and working with us again. No, he's not on the team, Mum. He forced his way in here. Oh? My apologies. I seem to lose a small amount of data when I reawaken. Still, I am glad that you are showing initiative, Adler. Were we supposed to talk? No. We have nothing more to discuss, ma'am. Ulrich has filled me in on everything. But I still worry whether the experiment's risks were properly assessed. Assessments will only be assessments. Much is beyond measure when it comes to Arcanum. Perhaps Faith plays a more important role here. I'm surprised it is you talking about faith, ma'am. Hmm. It seems we both have the ability to surprise each other. You are right. Assessments could indeed be useful to us. It allows us to know the probabilities of success and failure based on established facts and past experience. But when we find ourselves in uncharted darkness, with no information or past experience to guide us, how are assessments going to help us? The only thing we have in such darkness is the unwavering faith to move forward. When the first steam engine whistled, I awoke into this world. At the beginning of this new life, my circuits were charged with a singular primal desire to progress. In the midst of that never-ending whistle, I have watched man build the towers of science and knowledge, and I have watched them unleash chaos and destruction. You too have been lost and deterred, but your engines of progress have never stopped churning. Always move forward, no matter the destination you told yourselves. Until the storm brought everything to a standstill. But this is just a small setback. We are only back to the beginning where we stumble blindly. And this time, I happen to have a cane. No need to worry about me. I will not shut down as long as there is still hope for progress. Hmm. We have wasted a bit of time on data recovery. Come, Simone. Let us begin the next experiment. I hope to dissolve into pace this time, so we can easily handle it with a Coleman's ritual of transformation. Seen enough? We know what we are doing, and you are of no help here. It's been the same old story in this place for the past eight years. When your faith crumbled during the storm, it was us who took over the place and cleaned up after you. It was us who got things back up and running, put coals in the hearth, and blazed a trail when everyone was lost in the dark. I know you may not understand the intricacies of the Arcanum, but please... Show some basic respect for our efforts. Will you do the experiments yourself, Ulrich? Of course. 
I am not some emotional, unhelpful little punk. Do you still remember Adams? Adams, Roman, Adolf, Sylvia, Albert, Louise, those who were taken from us by the rain. Melvin, Francis, Caroline, Leopold. They volunteered for the field, but we never heard from them again. Now we have Dora, Richard, Dawkins, and Victor on the list. Life has a wicked sense of humor. My mentor, my classmates, my colleagues. Each of them deserve to live more than me. But they're all gone now. There's only me talking to you. A life. Useless. Am I going to see your names on that list too, Ulrich? Bear me the feelings, human. Though I will take back my sarcastic jabs at you, it is not something a leader should do. Madame Lucy talked to me about the importance of teamwork. Go back to your room, Adler. The Arcanists will take over from here. Until we get the results, you won't be needed here. I will say this, Ulrich. If you survive the experiments... I will submit the sincerest application to never be on the same team as you again. So neither of us will have to worry about teamwork. How's that sound? <laughs> I will wait for that application, Adler. There. Adler Hoffman from the cryptography team. Is Medicine Pocket in? I heard that they wrote a paper on the linear correlation between the purity of an Arcanist bloodline and their power. Can I get some more details on the research? paper is here. Help yourself. Sorry about the stains on it. I just took it out of the trash. If you're looking for Medicine Pocket, I'm afraid they just left. Left? To where? They left the building? Hasn't the countdown already begun? Um, yes, and by regulations we are not to leave, but, um... They said their new theory had to be verified in the storm. 